Now we go to the Public Relations Hall of Fame, Don Baer. We have one person um, who is going to be inducted this year, and I think he is a man who personifies so well the role of communication in America's public life in democracy. It's about politics, it's about policy, and it's about that public square. To make this award tonight our own chancellor, he is the man who convinced me to come to this great school, not just because he, I knew it was a great J school, but because he really enticed me. He saw education as the locus of innovation and a place where big problems can be tackled and solved. I was hooked. A warm welcome to Chancellor Holden Thorpe, our leader and my boss. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, it's great to be here tonight. It's very ironic that I'm introducing someone for an award in public relations. <laughs> I, think, I think Don's firm is the only crisis communications firm that I haven't hired. <laughs> And Jason, I'm glad you came to Carolina, but if you'd come to Washington University, we definitely could have made you into an investment banker. <laughs> okay, so. And, you know, despite my checkered record in journalism, I did bring Susan King to the <laughs> University of North Carolina. Okay, now some of you may know our next honoree because of his current job as worldwide chair and CEO of Burson Marsteller. Or you may know him as a media lawyer, as a journalist for the US News and World Report, or as a member of the prestigious Order of the Golden Fleece at Carolina. Or you may know him as an Emmy Award winning documentary producer and strategist at Discovery Communications. Or you may know him as a key member of the White House communications team that served President Clinton through the 1996 election. I know Don Baer as Helga Baer's son. <laughs> That's how everyone in Fayetteville knows Don Baer. <laughs> Some people would look at a career like Don's and see a fellow who couldn't hold a job in the same profession for more than a few years. And he doesn't even have a journalism degree. But his degrees are in political science, international relations, and in law. And that is an embodiment of the way we think about things at the University of North Carolina, that someone with a broad education like that could do so many interesting and specific things that, that Don has done. And it is a lesson for all the journalism and communications uh, students out there. This is a person who used the skills he learned in college and followed his passion. And the result is a stellar career centered around a common theme, how to use words and images to bring ideas to the world. No matter what task Don has set himself to, whether it be working to free a wrongly accused man from death row, covering the world as a journalist, writing State of the Union speeches, creating a documentary film festival, or developing new ways to educate people on timely public policy issues, he has brought the same values that we both learned from our dads way back in Fayetteville. Be honest, be fair, be transparent, and always stay true to your passion. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Baer. I just gave Holden my, my card, yeah. and I want, six weeks I, want, I want the record to reflect, I tried to get him to hire our firm. <laughs> Holden, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. It's very special for me to be introduced by the Chancellor. Uh, I'm from Fayetteville. I want to talk a little bit more about that. But the true great success story from my hometown is Chancellor Holden Thorpe, and it makes me very proud <laughs> to be here with you. 
so this kind of wacky career of mine that he described, I think it's testament to the fact that you can get along even if you never do decide what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> uh, th this is a homecoming for me, certainly geographically, but also spiritually. Uh, I've, had, I've been very fortunate in my life to have many good things happen to me, and so much of the good is rooted here, and rooted really in the people here and the influences that they've had on my life. Uh, Holden and I come from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, that's as much a spirit and a community as it is a geographical place. He mentioned our fathers, they were lawyers together in Fayetteville, uh, and he's exactly right. The values and the principles that we learned, hard work, of dedication to principle, of a sense of community, belonging to something bigger and more important than yourself, these are all important things. Now Holden and I share something else, which is that we both went to Terry Sanford High School. Uh, Terry Sanford, who of course was our great governor of North Carolina and the uh, president of uh, another university uh, nearby. <laughs> but we share that also with uh, tonight's uh, another honoree from Fayetteville, the other honoree from Fayetteville, Chris Hundros. And I want to say that it is humbling uh, to be among, among those who are honored tonight along with Chris. Uh, I learned tonight that Chris and I got our start in journalism at the Fayetteville Observer and there are representatives from the Observer here tonight. Uh, I think Chris uh, learned a lot more during his time at the Observer than I seem to have learned, uh, but it, it is indeed a special thing to be a part of this evening and I want to thank his family and friends for being here tonight as well. Um, Susan King, who is a great old friend uh, and someone that I've known for many years and it gave my heart great lift when she agreed to come here to Chapel Hill to take on this terrific job. I, I know that you are all very thrilled and excited by the work that she's been doing. She is someone who is immensely respected and admired and liked by many, many great people in journalism and across the media, and she's a great, great asset. And Susan, it's just wonderful to see you here. Uh, so I want to say a few more things about Fayetteville. Uh, there's a theme here. Uh, there are people here tonight who uh, really have sort of made it possible for me to have all those great opportunities. Joel Fleischman is here, uh, who is the mentor of my life, uh, and without whom um, most of the things that have happened to me and the kinds of opportunities I've had would never have taken place. Uh, we're going to move over the fact that Joel uh, is associated with that other place, but uh, <laughs> let the record also reflect Joel lives here in Chapel Hill and always has. <laughs> Uh, uh, my best friend from first grade, Toby McCoy, is here. And that tells you something about the sort of people and place that I do come from, that we are still dear friends all these years later. My wife, Nancy Bard, who is the light of my life, uh, along with our boys, uh, Nick and Adam. Nick is in Cape Town, South Africa today. Uh, uh, Adam is in Hanover, New Hampshire. We won't talk about that either. Uh, uh, it, the people that I owe the most, most to, for all of this, of course, are my parents. Uh, and you heard about my mother who was here tonight uh, and my father who would have loved to have been here. Uh, the thing that they gave to me that I, one of the most important things in my life they gave me was UNC, was this place in Chapel Hill and everything that it embodies. Uh, my mother used to say that she married my father so that her children could go to Chapel Hill. <laughs> I suspect there was more to it than that, but maybe not, I don't know, but it worked out. <laughs> but what they gave me, and my father taught me from a very early age, what a special place this was, how it represented truth and progress in this state and in the world, and that was something that to me was a very important part of who I was as a young person and who I have been my whole life. Uh, lux et e libertas, light and liberty. Uh, were really the things that this institution and everything that it meant embodied in this state and I hope that that continues to always be the case. Now there's another motto uh, about North Carolina that really speaks to the spirit of what I think this uh, award and these uh, inductions are about and that's the motto of the state of North Carolina. Esse quam videri, which means to be rather than to seem. To me, that's really what this is about. That's what the world of communications and media and journalism and advertising and public relations should all be about. That we have to really be about that which we really are, not those things that seem to be. And so I'm very proud to share all of that with you about this place and to call that spirit home. So thank you very much.